Hi, and welcome back to a new season of Self Care with Blue and Rolly. I am Rolly, and that is Blue. Hi, Blue. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I missed that. How you doing? <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while, so this is exciting and uh, looking forward to a happier, healthier new year. Happy um, New Year to you, buddy. Happy New Year. Yes, yes. So we'll see what 2021 brings us. Yes. So, um, you know, it's been a year, as we all know, and uh, we wanted to kick off uh, this new season with a topic that I think will really transcend across the entire year of whatever is going to, you know, unfold for us. And it's becoming a better athlete. So, Blue, I know you love to talk about mental game and physical toughness. So what do you have on initial thoughts about becoming a better athlete? Well, um, I believe first you have to define what becoming a better athlete is, Um, whether that's, you know, increasing. I I, I think it should be all around mental, physical, um, spiritual, energetic, whatever the case may be. Um, but I think you should define it for yourself first and then go ahead and make the plans um, and focus on you first before you start focusing on how to make your team better in order for your team to get better. You're probably going to have to get better yourself. And and that's a theme that we've been discussing throughout the the beginning of this show back in May um, with, you know, the ideas of um, – you know, we, I think we've even used the analogy before when you're on an airplane and, you know, if the oxygen thing comes down, you put it on yourself first and then you help others. Right. And that 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 is a metaphor, you know, that ev- everybody can kind of relate to. Right. It's an example everybody can relate to. Um, so. Um, so, yes, it's very important. I think, yes, the first I think the first step to becoming a better athlete is to want to become a better athlete. And that's by recognizing that you need to take care of yourself first. So I agree. Right. Um, so, you know, in lines with that, if you're, if people need direction on like, well, how do I get that motivation to be that better athlete? And I think you should just start with being an example for yourself. You're in you know, so you can look back and say, okay, well, this is what I've done in the past. You know, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to step it up now. So I'm going to do this, you know, and, and set these goals for yourself and set small achievable goals for yourself and then, you know, have a big plan as well, you know, and, and when you're looking at this, you know, you need to realize that you need to set it for like the year, not just for this month or, or three months, right? You need to set a big plan for the year. And then within that big plan, make smaller plans, um, kind of like a roadmap of your own um, athleticism? Well, um, I find that the method of using a 90 day work period, um, is very helpful because, you know, it's kind of like school where you have the, uh, what is it like the trimesters or quarters? Um, if you were to do three, 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 you're going to end up in a year period, you know? Um, so like once you define exactly what getting better means, like, uh, I've had jammers contact me and they say, you know, I want to increase my speed. I want to get better for next year by increasing my speed, you know? Um, and it's like, okay, so you want to increase your speed. Um, do you feel you have a problem with speed? Well, I mean, it's, it's, I, I want to be able to get around the track a lot faster. Well, usually you have to get through that pack. So I, I would probably work on your footwork. And they're like, oh, Okay, didn't look at it that way. So you want to narrow it down. And that's what I mean by defining. If you narrow your goals down to exactly what you want, you're able to break it down um, how you're going to do that within a 90-day period and see progress. You don't have to reach your goal within that 90 days, but you want to improve as you go towards your goal. So a real realistic goals say, you know, hey, I probably can't achieve this in 90 days, but I can achieve this within a year and I will see results all throughout the year. So during my play, I'm going to be seeing the results as well. So as you get better, being an example to yourself, you know, great. Yeah. And, you know, being an example to yourself 
then kind of turns into being present, right? So, you know, we, we all have days where we don't feel like doing anything, you know, whether it's work or going to school or even working out, right? But you have to make that commitment to yourself. And, and so you have to kind of be your own self-motivator and make sure that, you know, okay, I've made this commitment, I'm going to show up and I'm going to do the work, you know, and, and if you have within that 90 days, you have like a weekly schedule too. I mean, obviously when Derby's back in play, you, you'll have your, your practices and then whatever your, else your team and things do, but this is maybe some stuff outside of that as well. And, you know, you just want to make sure that you are showing up and doing the work because that's the only way you do improve, right? You know, that whole practice makes perfect kind of thing. I don't like to use the word perfect because everybody's levels are different. Um, I think that's just too, I think that just, I think that's a recipe for failure, honestly, when you put that word perfect on there. Yeah, because but, everybody sees it differently, sees what perfection is uh, differently. Um, I believe in the word better, you know, yeah. um, I as, as you're uh, setting those goals and then becoming aware and present, um, that goes on the 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 mindset side for me, because if you are aware of what you actually have an issue with, so that's why I asked them, are you sure it's speed? You might want to work on footwork. Um, being aware of uh, like your shortcomings, acknowledging them, not beating yourself up about them, but acknowledging them and noticing that they can become better. Like you, you can be better at this um, and what you're willing to do to become better. So, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm going to wake up every morning and I'm going to run three miles um, wind sprints so I can get up my conditioning. And then, you know, I'm going to do ladder drills and uh, make sure that I can do quick feet and things like that. You know, two weeks into this 90 days, you haven't done any of it. It's because you set it too high sometimes. So if you haven't been running three miles every day already, you might want to start with walking one mile, maybe. I don't know. So, you know, it goes with that whole thing for goals. You have to uh, set something uh, achievable and realistic. That requires being present and aware of your abilities and shortcomings. Yeah. And, you know, and your time management, time commitment, you know, you, you may have time to do, you know, a mile run, but you may not have time to do a three mile run. So, you know, you have to be aware of that too. And it's a, it's a big juggling act, honestly, with, within yourself. Um, you know, some days I know I'm okay, okay. I can go to the gym for 45 minutes, but on, you know, Thursdays I can go to the gym for 90 minutes, you know, and you just have to be, you know, be aware, be present and yes, set yourself up for success, not for failure. Um, and yes, and again, reiterating this, this is going to take time. You know, you're not just gonna go overnight. And actually I saw a quote, um, and I'm probably gonna paraphrase because I don't have the quote directly in front of me, but it's Usain Bolt, the uh, Olympic uh, sprinter. And he says something into the lines, I trained four years for nine seconds. Yeah, that's really powerful when you put it into that perspective, you know? And that's basically what we're talking about here is you got to put in the work and you're going to put in a lot more work than when you actually need to perform to be that a better athlete, you know? So it's, I, I just, I, I loved that quote because it was obviously, you know, that, but to actually read it and hear it to you're like, whoa, you know, that is, that's what it takes to be an athlete. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and plug an athlete name in there. Cause I always love to say her name. My favorite, Bonnie Thunders. Her cardio is ridiculous because she does cardio every day. She rides a bike. <laughs> it's there, you know? So it's not just that she got on the track and became this amazing athlete overnight. She's been working towards it forever. And I noticed that with a lot of skaters. I mean, you can look at, uh, you, you, we always kind of uh, highlight uh, jammers. Uh, I, I love blockers too. I love pivots as well. But just, you know, uh, noting um, freight train. Freight train yeah. was born with skates on, you know. Um, when you see the footwork, when you see uh, the uh, lateral spread that she can do, when you see her 
uh, just skate on one skate. It's because she's been doing that for a long time. So I, I just, I admire uh, people uh, for the skills that they have, but even more so when they work towards them. And it's not just, you know, we can say it's natural, but they are doing amazing things because of things they have done leading up to the point of us seeing them on the screen or us seeing them on the track. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, we've both been to, you know, many playoffs, championships, you know, uh, and those skaters on the track, you know, are some of the best of the best for sure. Right. I mean, that's, they've, they've earned that right to be there <laughs> and to do that, but they make it look so easy right and even right look at any sport at a higher elite level they make it look easy but do you we don't realize how hard they work to get there you know right. yes of course some have a natural ability and talent uh for certain things some were born with skates on and skate around their house if <laughs> you follow freight on social media you right. know she has a whole little skate room now with sport court or skate court whatever it's called that you know which is hilarious you know but you know that's just going to her love and passion, honestly. But, you know, but there's also her commitment to keep to keep skating in, in crazy times, you know. But, you know, they work so hard and we, do, we don't see that. We just see the end result, you know. And and you have to make sure that you, you know, again, with this whole goals and achieving what you want to do. But the main thing is you're going to have to just put the work in, you know. Definitely. Um, and so you're putting, you're putting all this work in, you need to prioritize your sleep, you know, <laughs> man, and that's a hard one. That's a hard one for a lot of people, you know, and especially we have, you know, skaters at all different ages, um, and, you know, different levels of their life and, you know, juggling so many different things. And, and a lot of times sleep is not a priority for people. And so, you know, you have to really kind of start to make that a priority. I know it. Or I, even acknowledging say. how important it is, not necessarily that it's not a priority because that's another awareness thing. Cause some people believe that, um, they're fine without sleep. I am one of those people who can literally sleep for four hours and wake up energized. Okay but that's on an individual level, okay? But also, that's energized to go out and talk and, um, you know, uh, just be awake and alert. Now, if you asked me to <laughs> go run some stairs <laughs> or run around a track after four hours of sleep, I'm going to tell you to kick rocks, okay? Um, I need more sleep than that. So while training, um, during this time off, uh, of course, I no longer skate, but I've been trying to work out more. I am getting the most beautiful REM with working out because my body's like, hey, you think we could recover? And I'm like, hey, how about I hydrate, drink some water? And uh, yeah, sure, we can go to sleep because it is definitely necessary. If your body is not able to sleep and recover, you are not going to uh, heal correctly. You are not going to necessarily be at your optimal output. Um, um, in my experience with a lot of skaters, you are not going to be happy. You're going to be a grumpy buns. Nobody likes a grumpy buns. So on, on that note, um, I know for myself is I, I go and I Olympic lift early in the mornings. Um, it just depends on my schedule. I either go like between, I, I, I will do that between six and 8 a.m., which is kind of a big window. But sometimes when I know I have to get up super early and I go to bed and I don't get a good night's sleep, I, you know, I sometimes I just have trouble sleeping and I actually will not go to the gym that early in the morning because even though we just recently talked about earlier in the show about, you know, you need to be present, show up you know, be, hold yourself accountable. But if you're 
it's because you didn't get enough sleep and your body isn't ready to do those workouts first thing in the morning like that because yeah, your cognitive be... fu function is definitely low as well. You know, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, you know, if you think about it, like a toddler, um, if you've ever seen a toddler who's sleepy and it's like, it's time for a nap and they throw a fit, um, or, you know, it's, it's time to go to sleep. It's time for bed. And it's like, can I have water? Can I have a snack? It's negotiation, right? Uh, the same thing happens when you don't get enough sleep and you wake up in the morning um, uh, like Rolly and Rolly wants to lift weights. It's like the negotiation is, I don't want to lift. And chances are, she may be at a point where she doesn't want to lift at all for the rest of the day. So um, it's in her best interest to get the sleep she needs so she can wake up and continue to progress towards her goal. And if she doesn't, then now she has to alter the goals, set back further a little bit, or uh, change her schedule around, which considering how busy she is as a therapist, how amazing she is as a therapist, and how on call she is as a therapist, it's probably not in her best interest to miss the sleep or miss the workout. She needs to take care of herself as well. Yes, and I completely agree with that because if I don't go in the morning, I don't like to, to lift after work you know what we do is pretty pretty strenuous physically and mentally so i don't like to to lift after work i will do it if i have to but you know but there is moments where i have to say okay i didn't get enough sleep it's not going to be worth it i'm not going to do well i'm not going to perform well in the gym i may even hurt myself so i'm gonna have to just take another hour of sleep and then I'm going to have to make up this workout, right? And so, and then you have to figure out how to make up that workout, you know? And sometimes, you know, getting crappy sleep is your own fault. And sometimes it's not. Our bodies are, you know, sometimes just don't allow us to get a good night's sleep for whatever kind of reason you have going on, you know? So, um, so yes, but, you know, prioritize, make sure whatever sleep you know your body needs, you're getting as much as you can of that. Um, so there's also, uh, another way to be, you know, to help with becoming a better athlete. And I think blue and I know a little bit about this one and I wanted to bring this one up because, well, duh, but get a regular massage and we're not going to go too much into it. Cause we talk a lot about massage cause that's our thing, but, and we have the rest massage. of the year to let you know that you should be doing self-care with body work, but yes. you know, we're just going to touch on it. Like just to touch it on it for sure. <laughs> I like that. Just make it, you know, how pal palpable, <laughs> <laughs> not palpable. Um, <laughs> so, and you know, you need to be doing all different types of trainings as well, you know? Um, so obviously you want to train and we've talked about this before on other shows too, you can refer to, but you want to be able to, you know, do some type of cross training. So do some off skates things, um, you know, like I love to Olympic lift and I did that while I was playing derby and that definitely certainly helped keep me strong, um, you know, and then do, do something fun, you know, if you like to play, you know, pickleball or something like that, stay active with cardio, things like that, you know, so, but you want to definitely make sure that you are incorporating core strength, you know, overall strength and some cardiovascular stuff as well. Um, and then you can, we, you know, we love all the stretching. So, you know, the yoga, the Pilates, um, you know, getting stretched on a table by somebody doing your own foam rolling kind of things like that. Anything that's going to incorporate any of that as well, um, is really important to, uh, be a complete overall athlete. I agree completely. Um, you know, uh, we, we already touched on, uh, the body work, uh, and then, you know, self-care, uh, doing your own stretching, um, uh, utilizing tools for stretching. Uh, once again, you can refer to previous videos where we do recommend uh, certain types of tools um, where you can look them up and uh, order them to help you out. And, uh, you know, whatever you have to do. A lot of people see things, uh, whether it's a massage therapist, life coach, personal trainer um, tools to help you recover. Um, they're all necessary, honestly. Um, but 
you can do a lot of things on your own uh, as a trainer. Uh, I always ask somebody, would you, would you like to walk, run, or fly towards your goal? And when you say walk, run, or fly, um, if you want to walk, we can, we can do the basics and we can still get a result. It's going to take us a little time to get there. We can run and we're going to get amazing results and we're going to get them, you know, in a, a reasonable amount of time, but a little fast. But if you want to fly, I need your complete dedication to what I am recommending, whether it be spending what you need to spend doing what you need to do as far as workouts or eating um, and uh, taking care of yourself, uh, whatever the case may be. So I tell everybody, a lot of people like to use the wonderful uh, description of expensive. Okay. Um, I need you out there, everybody, to acknowledge there is a difference between expense and value. Okay. So an expense is, you know, I'm going to have to spend the money, right? I'm going to have to. I have to spend the money. Value is I am able and get to spend this money in order to make myself better, okay? So you can walk, you can run, or you can fly. As long as you are actually uh, making progress towards that goal, that's what we are here for to help you maybe be aware of certain things or, you know, help you guide you, whatever the case may be along with that. So um, you just keep in mind, you know, uh, it's not necessarily that people are trying to make you do something you don't want. If you want something, there is going to be something you have to do in order to get it. I like it. And you did throw in nutrition. And that is also another part of becoming a better athlete. You have to, you know, you're working so hard on your, you know, body, you have to be treating the inside of your body just as well. Um, nutrition is very important. And then also making sure not only that you're getting the right nutrients that you need throughout the day, but also recovery from workouts. Um, you need to make sure you're feeding your body then as well. And then, you know, your favorite, you just took a sip and you mentioned it earlier. Uh oh, careful. Hydration. <laughs> it takes it for you. You know, perfect so, timing, y'all. Perfect, perfect timing. timing. Perfect timing. We have a whole show on hydration. So um, you can go back and watch that one as well. Um, a couple more I want to touch on uh, before we wrap it up. If you have any questions, you can drop them into the chat. Um, but uh, train in hard conditions. Um, that's where your mental toughness will come in. So you know, if you're on roller skates, you're pretty limited because you can't really skate in the rain or the snow on purpose. I've definitely been out skating before and it started to rain. I had to get back. But, you know, so obviously you can't do something like that. But you know what? Go for a walk or a run when it's not that nice out, when you don't feel like doing it, you know, um, because that will help improve that mental toughness for you. And then when you are performing, uh, you can kind of reflect back on that day when I hooked up that mountain and it was super windy and it was muddy and it was tough. And, you know, I'm in this nice climate controlled arena now skating on a flat track. Right. So, you know, do these, those things that are going to really create um, space for you to reflect on that mental toughness that you had to get you through those moments while you're performing at your best. One of uh, the my, uh, reflecting back on the games that I've seen, one of my favorite games uh, or teams to watch was an Alaskan team. Um, and it was during, I want to say the tournament was called Battle for the Coast, okay, out in Southern California. And um, at this Battle for the Coast, there was an Alaskan team. And they only had, it was either five or six players in a tournament. In a tournament, y'all. Tournament, okay? and. I mean, everybody could have probably took it easy on them. But usually at tournaments, it's cutthroat. It's like, I want to take the trophy home, okay? Um, this team came in second. They worked every other team as far as cardio. 
Um, and we have to take into consideration the climate that they came from, uh, the elevation they came from. Uh, they are going to have a different level of uh, body heat, like uh, warming up, um, because of the insulation they have created living in that climate. Um, Elevation-wise, they are going to have a different uh, depth of getting that oxygen in, okay? Um, and it wasn't their fault that they, they were in that um, environment, right? Um, but it did benefit them. So um, I've worked with a lot of different sports and uh, hypoxia training or elevation training is one of the things that people do. Um, you know, not to mention any names, but, you know, if you live in Denver, you might have a little bit more cardio than other people. Um, not to say it's unfair or anything. Call me out if you want to. Um, but yes, <laughs> definitely training in climates that you don't necessarily uh want to be in or environments uh such as rain or it's cold outside i mean i have a best friend she likes to walk every morning and i'm like it's cold i don't want to go she's all put a freaking jacket on <sighs> every excuse in the book blue has them so don't come at me with excuses i've already made them all okay um but yeah it, it's going to help you get better yes and you know do not train in conditions that could be detrimental to your health though that's just of a little course. psa of you course. know so if it's too cold obviously if it's too hot you know we don't want any hypothermia or heat stroke or anything like that to happen you know but you know go out when it's kind of inclement weather that's not the greatest but it's still safe for you to be out and things like that and yes you know it, it is uh just it could be beneficial to you in so many different ways and just like that crazy alaska team that's awesome that was That's really awesome. fun. It was just yeah. sick watching them. Like that many players, you don't have rotation at all, dude. Yeah. Yeah. One person gets a breather, maybe. Right? So, yeah. Like, here, take a sip of water, get your butt back on the track. Like, yeah. That's work. That's work. Yeah. You got to appreciate that. And that's what I appreciate, man. I'll take, <laughs> I'll take any of those players any day because it was no complaints. It was smiles the whole time. Just happy to be in Cali, happy to be in that tournament and working their butt off. Awesome team. Awesome team. If I can find the name, maybe I'll tell you guys on the next, uh, um, on the next, uh, pod, uh, show, show podcast. So I could tell you. <laughs> podcast. That's our next adventure. That's our Let's next adventure. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's a good segue to another great, um, characteristic of becoming a better athlete, which is to stay humble. And obviously this team was quite humble. Um, and I wonder how it made other teams feel. You know, that's also a really good thing, right? You know, you're being an example for yourself and then you can be an example for others. And I'm sure, you know, these other teams looked at them and said, wow, look at that. You know, because not only are they physically tough, they're mental tough as well. You know, so so staying humble um, is just a really good topic for all of life, you know, so. Um, and then another really good thing to do for becoming a better athlete is to write down your why, you know, and you don't have to, you know, if you're not into writing things down, some people aren't, or, you know, if you want to put it into your notes on your smartphone or whatever, but, you know, as long as you have that in your own mind, why, why are you doing this? Why do you want to become a better athlete? You know, and, and I'm going to let Blue talk about this a little bit because I know you do life coaching and you do meditation and things like that. So, you know, write down your why. I, I find it uh, a lot more helpful to write it down. Um, mm -hmm. The reason being is because uh, when you write, write something down or you speak something, it, 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 it brings a lot more accountability to it. Um, it brings more power to it as well. Um, they say that you should write it down. They say you should write it in blue ink. And, and when you do that, um, you're acknowledging that this is the goal that you set or this is your mission or um, this is why you're doing it. OK, so like some people say, I do it to show uh, younger athletes um, that things are possible. OK, or I do it to. Uh, show uh, my mom or my dad that everything they taught me about work ethic is, you know, going to be 
you know, uh, end in the result of me succeeding. Okay. Or I do this for myself because of, you know, you have the skaters who uh, go into the game um, and they may have been overweight when they started and uh, they lost some serious poundage because they were putting in work and doing everything they could possibly do um, to get in athletic shape. Okay. Um, so they may have been overweight as far as medical standards, but then they get into a athletic shape where they're gaining more muscle, um, and having better cardiovascular health. They did it for their health. When you write these things down, they become more powerful and you are more likely to hold yourself accountable because somebody will say, Hey, why do you play roller derby? Oh, well, it's fun. It's like, you know, um, camaraderie you you know have a team and um they support you and the more you speak about it the more you feel towards it it's like you start thinking about all the individual things that have happened when you joined roller derby in your life um reflecting from it so when you write that why down keep in mind that if that why is powerful enough okay rainy days don't matter Injuries don't matter. Uh, you know, bad calls by, uh, you know, certain people in charge during the game don't matter. Um, it doesn't matter because you're going to put your best foot forward, okay? Um, and usually your why, if it's strong enough, it keeps you humble. Because if that why is powerful enough, if it's high enough on your list to stay in the back of your head while you're doing something, it's like, look. I have a goal, but I will not compromise my integrity to reach it, okay? I will hold myself accountable when I fall short, when I decide to take shortcuts to do what I need to do. So writing down that why is so powerful, and it is more likely to hold you accountable, and it is more likely to motivate somebody else as well as yourself, and it's more likely to hold the memory of why you started something and how you got there. I don't think I need to say anything else. I think that is a great way to wrap up the show. Um, PDX Speed Bump did uh, have some suggestions for that team. Rage City or Boom Town? I want to say it was Rage. Rage? Awesome. It's probably Rage. Well, good on I, Rage. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it was sick. Yeah, that's sick. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love that. I love it. All right. Well, I think, uh, yeah, we're going to end on that. I think that was a great note. And, um, you know, we look forward to more exciting uh, self-care shows throughout this 2021. Be well. All right. Thanks for joining me. All right. Take care. Bye.